They must kill me too. The newbie almost killed me. The newbie almost killed me. Much love, much love. Yeah, for sure. I, um, yeah, for sure. I'm um, definitely way out. I'm in the days. I'll interact with, I'll I'll interact with people. people. Soon, soon, man. Soon, soon, soon. Appreciate it. Soon. Appreciate it. You know, can you, you, you know, can you give me a, give me nice a nice little retweet, so nice little retweet, so people can know that I'm streaming, man. I'm Appreciate streaming, it. man. Appreciate it.
Grenade launcher. Grenade launcher. Heard a shot.
Oh, I screwed that up again, bro. Jeez. This game makes me so angry. So angry, bro. Gotta get that dub, dub city, baby. I'm due for one.
And we're live, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing today? I've created a monster. <laughs> you and got that mon- right. And not Monster Cat either. <laughs> so, welcome to this special edition of Generation <laughs> Orange, your Houston soccer <laughs> internet show and podcast. <laughs> Steve Blues, Lynch. Blues fan in chat. <laughs> No, Blues fan goes, I spat my drink for f- sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cisco, thank you for that question. That was fantastic. <laughs> trash, trash, trash. <laughs> oh, this has started out fantastic. I'm so no, glad. you're trash. I'm so glad we decided to do a Monday night episode of Gen Orange. Uh, so, guys, just so you know, the reason we're doing this is because, A, it's the off season. B, uh, it's a shorter show this way. It'll be a shorter show tomorrow. We are still doing our normal show. It'll just be one hour instead of two hours tomorrow. And um, we're bored. No, that absolutely has nothing to do with it. I've got plenty of stuff <laughs> I can be working on right now, but thanks. Well, uh, uh, but no, seriously, it, it's, it's, there's enough going on right now and knowing it's the off season, we're going to want to be able to do shorter, quicker shows. Uh, and so this is going to enable that. What are you trying to show? You got a game pad? No, because you're like, there's a lot of other things that you that you could do, and I'm like... So, question. I have that controller. I have four more, or three more Xbox controllers you can use. Why do you keep using the piece of crap that keeps making loud noises during our streams? Which one? This? That, that, oh, you don't use your keyboard in conjunction with it. Dude, like, you need to listen to the stream after and, like, listen how loud your gamepad is. It's crazy loud. No, that's because I have it, like, right here. No, 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 no. I'm not even talking about the vibrations. I'm talking, like, when you're, like, like I can hear you physically pushing buttons hard. That's how hard I get. Joysticks. Oh, okay, maybe I don't want you using my Xbox controllers. Anyways, I'm sorry. That's we I have, have gone own. totally <laughs> off the rails this morning. Or this, this evening. It is not morning, I promise. Uh, regardless of what the sky outside may look like. Um, uh, Cisco says, we got Rockets, Monday Night Football, plus Gen Orange. Yeah, I know. Uh, crazy Monday night full of sports, which is fantastic. Hey, at least we don't have MLS playoffs right now. Uh, that was last yesterday. Uh, and that plus NFL was nuts. Uh, four games yesterday, four uh, MLS playoff matches yesterday. Um, many of them were good matches to watch. Uh, and then also all the football games that were going on as well. Um, it was just crazy, uh, everything that was going on. Yeah, Edson came back with a little bit of a little bit of a trim going on. Um, uh, I don't want to know the answer to that question, Cisco. We'll leave that alone. Not even touch that with a ten foot pole. Uh, so anyway, so uh, let let's just let's talk about because we're not going to have any guests tonight. We're not going to. I mean, we're not going to take calls, but you guys obviously we're going to engage with you on chat like we always do. At least Philly can't lose today. That is correct, Cisco. You are one hundred percent correct. You get the one point for tonight. Um, but no, uh, so let's talk about the two things that have come out this week, and then we'll kind of dive into each of them for a, a little bit, and then we'll let you guys kind of chime in with any questions or thoughts or whatever. So first and most important, uh, it was announced last week, and I don't remember what day it was announced, uh, but it was announced that it was on Tuesday. How did we not talk about this Tuesday last week? Yeah, we did. Did we? We talked about the announcement? No, you know what? The announcement was on Wednesday. Wednesday, that's what it was. Okay, so, uh, hey, Javier, Senor, so- Senor Ochoa. Uh, Aren't you supposed to be at work? <laughs> nah, he, he could be watching on his phone at work. He works in the oil weeks, but no, he. Oh yeah, okay, that's he, fair. He, he, he played. He he he, he, uh, he works during the day. This this shift. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, this these gotcha. two weeks. So uh, good to awesome. have you on. Hey, yeah, appreciate you being on. Um, but uh, so back to what I was saying. Uh, Dynamo. We already knew as of last Tuesday. Uh, why is that crappy? They won. That's uh, more than your San Antonio. Six and true. Oh, right. You don't have a San Antonio football team, do you? Uh, do they even have a soccer team, though? I mean, I mean, they do, but there's also high school soccer, so does it really count? I mean, Frisco has a soccer team. That doesn't mean they're any good. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I hear I hear that good soccer teams typically win championships and trophies. Um, and That's not the Toros. Well, I mean, you guys are only three years old, too, so there's sure. that. Uh, <laughs> go Broncos. Yeah, how'd that work out for you on Sunday? Uh, just saying. Uh, triggered. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, okay, so anyways, let's let's stop derailing me, Jack. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get through this five-minute intro segment in 20 minutes. Uh, but they announced on Wednesday uh, – well, actually, okay, so, so on Tuesday we knew going in that Chris Kennedy had already stepped down 
uh, or, or yeah, step down to become the kind of head of the Houston World Cup bid for 2026 to host matches uh, for that. Um, Frisco made the playoffs. Um, that that's all good and well. So did Philly. That doesn't mean anything until they actually win something of value in the playoffs. I'm just saying. And we have two. Yeah, I mean plus open cup. Yeah, plus open cup. Uh, and you know if we're counting championships, Cisco and I did this the other day at the last match. And what what did we get to, Cisco? Like twenty something championships between all the different Dynamo levels of clubs, including like reserve league trophies and things like that. Uh, <coughs> Frisco's already at home waiting for next year. I mean he's not wrong. Um, but stop it. I'm trying to try not to read chat, but it's very hard. Uh, <laughs> Frisco is South Oklahoma, Harry. Never yeah, forget yeah. that. Exactly. That's right. Well, no, I mean, we'll count them Texas for right now. They did, they did support us during Harvey. So we got to give them credit for that. Well, that's true. They did good things. Uh, okay. So thank you, Gabe. G wow. Gabe, you, Gabe needs to be a moderator of our chat, damn it. <laughs> uh, but seriously, though, uh, so they announced, like I said, we already knew going in Tuesday that Chris Kennedy had stepped down. We didn't know who was going to be announced uh, or you know who, who was going to take that role. We At the time, we even thought that role was still going to be president, uh, but that it, or uh, not president, but chief business officer. And it turns out that role, that title is incorrect. Uh, and so it was announced on Wednesday afternoon um, that it would be John Walker, uh, who was uh, a vice president, executive vice president at, uh, with the Grizzlies? He's also done time with Tickets.com as their president and CEO. Uh, he's also done time, um, done time like he's in jail. Uh, <laughs> done time. Uh, he he did time with um, the Phoenix Suns with the Kansas City Royals. Uh, did with he have a Oklahoma stint? University of Oklahoma? Uh, did he also have a stint or like collaborated with Southampton? That was part of the tickets.com thing. Oh, okay. Um, and, but anyway, so he's got tons and tons and tons of sports entertainment experience. He's got experience as, business a, as a business guy. Uh, he knows business. And uh, during his tenure with the Grizzlies, uh, which is one of the smallest mar TV markets and smallest markets in general uh, in the country for basketball and just in general, um, the guy uh, managed to pull in some of the best ticketing numbers year over year. Uh, he actually knows how to market, how to advertise. Uh, and so they announced it on Wednesday. And I have to tell you, watching the press conference Wednesday, and I know everybody's going to say, you know, talk is cheap. Let's see, you know, let's see it in action. And I'm going to follow that up with another statement. But, um, you know, he said, you know, he was asked a bunch of questions. But his first thing that he talked about was uh, one of my primary goals here is to reconnect with the supporters groups. I want to help them grow. I want to reignite that passion. I want to reignite that culture. I want to reignite that atmosphere um, that the stadium is lacking. Um, and that's incredible because this is coming from an NBA guy where supporters groups in the NBA are far and few between. Um, and, and so that's pretty awesome that he's kind of engaged on that level. And uh, he said he wanted to reach out like the next day he was going to reach out or the, within the next week he, want, he was going to reach out to the supporters groups, all of them, uh, to their leadership and, and schedule meetings with each of them because he wanted to sit down and he wanted to talk about what their perceived issues were, where they were struggling, what the club could do to help them. I mean, he went through you know five or six things that he, he wanted to do right out of the gate just with them. And that struck me as important because one of the things that we've heard consistently is that the front office has been reticent, if if not outright... Uh, outright um, complacent? Not complacent, but outright... Um, uh, antagonistic towards the supporters groups at times. Um, like they would basically, you know, it, they were not gonna, um, you know, they're not going to support them essentially is, is what I'm trying to get to. And for him to come in and his first thing that he's talking about is this, um, to me, that's a pretty powerful statement to start to kind of lead his tenure with that. Um, and actually Darby, that's exactly what I was going to say. I've heard from a couple of people and actually, I guess it was in discord chat, that he already has scheduled, and it might have been Bob, uh, that he's already scheduled the meeting with Texian Army for next week. And he did that the day after he started, um, or, well, the day after he was announced to have started. So the guy is already hitting the ground running. He's not taking a slow approach to this whatsoever. Um, the second thing that caught me off guard that I was like, oh, hell yeah, I love this guy already. And it makes sense. It's not a big, like, epiphany type thing. But he mentioned that 
his other big priority was going to be, I want to fill the stadium, um, you know, on a, on a match to match basis. That's his goal. That's, you know, that's what he's really striving for. And, you know, that's an honest answer. And, and a lot of people, you know, they turned around and they said, well, you know, his goal should be for a winning soccer team. No, that's not his goal. That has nothing to do with his, his job, his position or his title. Um, his job strictly is business. And there are those that, uh, as Blues fan pointed out, immediately came out and said, oh, but he's not a soccer guy. We need a soccer guy to lead this team. The problem is, is he's not expected to lead this team. I know his title is president of business operations, but that kind of should tell you what he's actually doing. He's the president of business operations, not president of soccer operations, president of business operations. So his goal is to basically make money where he can. And I appreciate his approach. He he mentioned also later in other interviews that uh, he wanted to take the time to, um, you know, he understood, man, I, I copied this quote and I, I pasted it in Discord. I don't know if you can pull it up uh, for me, Edson. That'd yeah, be great. Um, that I pulled from an article um, that the Dynamo released, which, yes, it's a Dynamo released article, but it still had a quote that was directly from him, which I liked, um, talking about uh, how he understood that um, not everybody comes to a match for the same reason um, or people that come to them. Yeah. Uh, says different audiences will come to matches for different reasons. We need to find the best mix of things that touch on a lot of different audiences. Some of that will be around the game experience. Some of it will be around the competitive on the pitch. Some of it may be through the use of technology. Some of it might be all about drinking a beer and having a good time. All of these things have to be put in play to appeal to multiple audiences in order to pack the house. So, right, and, and this is what we've been saying all along, is that there are these different types of fans, and it felt like the Dynamo from an advertising, from marketing standpoint, from just how they went around their, their game day opera experience, it was all about a certain type of fan. You want to go, go just uh, give him some water and some food because he's empty, um, and that may quiet him down for another 30 minutes or so, which is really all we need. Uh, wow, holy crap. Oh, we started at 7.30. Okay, I looked at the clock and I went, it's 45 after. Holy crap, we've gone 45 minutes. Okay, no, anyways. Uh, but, you know, he's talking about these different types of fans and, and the reason why they come to matches. And that, that's important to me because it means he understands who his, if you will, who his constituents, who his stakeholders are. And when you understand who your stakeholders are, you're better able to engage with those stakeholders. You're better able to create experiences around who your stakeholders are. Uh, it, it's something I'm learning in my own industry. It's something I'm learning from a business standpoint myself. Um, and so it's really cool to kind of see that from his position already that that's something he's working on. And I can tell you that I've talked to a couple people within the organization asking a few questions related to John, uh, or Mr. Walker, and, and ha you know his initial few days within the organization and kind of what they perceived and what they saw. And you know they were very clear that, that they – already see a difference in kind of how his approach is and, and um, that he's very approachable. He wants you to talk to him about your experience. He wants you to talk to him about what you're dealing with. Um, and he wants to be engaged at every level. And I feel like coming out of the previous regime that we had with Chris Kennedy, that's a different approach. It's not that Chris didn't want to see things taken care of, but it's that Chris also had people that he entrusted to do those things. And I think Mr. Walker, Johnny Walker, is still going to have the same thing where he's going to have people he entrusts to handle those things. But he's also going to have this thing where, hey, if you've got a problem just come, you know, and, and you can't seem to get it resolved or whatever, come up to me and we'll take care of it. You know, He wants to be a partner in this in terms of partnering with the people that are, he's already empowered. He doesn't want to be seen as a guy who's sitting up in a – you know, in, a, in an executive office with his feet up on the desk, you know, what, waiting for everybody else to do something instead of doing it himself. Um, you know, and again, he's hit the ground running. He's done everything that he can so far. I'm impressed at this point. I'm I'm excited at this point because this is what this team needed. And I've I've said it on Twitter, I've said it on the show, I've said it on other social media, I've said it in the Discord chat. I don't know for how many months now, but this team needed an infusion of something different. And Kennedy was no longer get cutting cutting it when it came to the business side of operations. And and the other thing I found out, and I this was through Googling actually that um, there was a uh, one of the guys who was um, uh, vice president of – no, he was the chief revenue officer, CRO, which is another business position essentially that Mr. Walker has essentially taken over, CRO. Um, he went and he's now working for another company uh, as their chief financial officer so uh, or chief business officer. 
Uh, and so this is important, though, because uh, I didn't know that had taken place until I started doing some Googling and found it as it was. And um, the reason why that's important is because I feel like that's the one area of this organization right now that really struggles the most. That is the one area that needed the most infusion of, and I'm going to use a word that I'm probably going to end up using for the next like two years. It needed an infusion of culture. Um, and it's a culture of uh, commitment to the fan, commitment to the experience, and commitment to the organization. Um, and one of the things that I found out, and I, I, I don't know if I can actually share this, but I'm going to share it anyways, so it's whatever. Um, hopefully I don't end up burning a source, but that's neither here nor there. The organization is taking a, an approach where they're looking to keep around their core group of individuals in the front office. And this is important because – Unlike in kind of years past where you had guys that after they did their two or three year tenure, they were gone, you know, they were ready to leave. Now there's this kind of look at, okay, are you willing to be committed long term? Can we bring in some guys that have been in or some people that have been in this industry or been in sports business, uh, you know, sports sales, you know, ticket sales with other other organizations, whatever it may be. Can we bring these people in that are veterans, spend a little bit more money and get a lot better of a result out of it? And that ain't, that's going to include – Long term, going to include the service uh, department and service division of the of the of the Dynamo. Why that's important is that is one of the other number one things that I've heard consistently by numbers of people is that I don't know who my service guy, a service rep is. I don't or my account rep. I don't know who my I don't know. You know, I've had this issue and I've thrown it to my account rep and nothing happened. I need to buy tickets and I don't know who to call. You know, and, and I'm not talking like regular tickets. I'm talking about like additional tickets beyond what you already have just to one or two matches. So it's, I expect in the next three to five years, and it's going to take a cut. It's going to take probably this season. We'll probably about halfway through the season start to see an impact, uh, but it's going to take some time. But what we're going to see, I think is we're going to see better targeted promotions. I think we're going to see better targeted marketing. Uh, I think we're going to see better targeted advertising, and I think we're going to see advertising physically. Uh, and what I mean by that is we're going to see it on TV. We're going to hear it on the radio. Um, and it's not just going to be <laughs> – what's up, Cal? Uh, it's not just going to be one method of, of approaching or trying to engage with, uh, with people, the community, right? Uh, it's going to be a kind of – I think it's going to be like a holistic approach, and, and, and they're going to try a lot of different things. And, and you know, one of the other things that he said is he's he's – he comes from an organization that had to be innovative in how they engaged with the community because of the fact that it was such a small market and because it was such a different market compared to all the other NBA markets. And so he said, I'm willing to be innovative. If somebody comes up with an idea that makes sense, um, you know, from an organizational standpoint, as far as advertising, marketing, selling tickets, whatever it is, he goes, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to approach that and figure out how we can make it happen. He goes, I want to be innovative. I want to be an organization that, that is looked at uh, when my tenure ends and, and, and is considered the forefront of MLS as opposed to one of the, you know, one of the followers in MLS. And that is what I want to hear out of my president of business operations. We want to be the leader in the industry in this area. Um, and I know that, again, that's all talk. That's all he's saying. But again, from what I'm seeing so far, from what people are telling me, he is putting his uh, money where his mouth is, so to speak. He's talking the talk, but he's also walking the walk. Um, beer koozies that say friends is a huge promotion. Uh, that is for the Dynamo um, in the past. I think we're past that point. I think we're we're going to uh, we're going to be looking at some new promotions this year for sure. Um, and I suspect we may see some changes with the advertising and marketing team over this next year. Um, some, some ones that may surprise pe some people because there are people that have been established in those positions for a while. And let's be honest, they haven't gotten the job done when it comes to promotions, marketing, or advertising. And um, I, I don't think Mr. Walker is going to settle for second best at this point. I think he really is content to – or uh, he is really committed to doing everything he can and everything in his power to – to change the culture of the organization, if you will. Um, so let me get your take on it, Edson, and I'm going to go shut our dog up for about five minutes. Okay. Um, so basically, I think this is this is a really uh, interesting uh, hire by the Houston Dynamo. Uh, I honestly, like, I feel like even though they say, oh, no, things aren't going to, there isn't going to be like a drastic change. I think there is. I think there is going to be a drastic change in how business is going to be done uh, by the Houston Dynamo. 
because you know i mean the way the marketing was done the way business operations were being done you know under um uh, chris canetti the bar wasn't really set really really high and i think i think that that um that Mr. John Walker is going to be doing a hell of a, uh, of a better job and it's going to, compared to what, what we were used to, it's going to be a drastic change. And I welcome that. And I think it's time for people that, you know, that squeaky wheels, those squeaky wheels to understand that this guy's not going to touch uh, Matt Jordan's job for them saying oh well we need a soccer guy we don't need a soccer guy in business operations we need a guy that knows business and we brought a guy that knows business like the back of his hand um, that reminds me <clears throat> so let them know we also found out through the i guess i'll talk into the mic uh so we also found out through the can they hear me yes okay we also found out through the hello uh also found out through the uh conversations and interviews that uh, one of the things Brenner said is um, his role, uh, Walker's role, is is going to report to him. But now Matt's role, Jordan's role, is going to report to Brenner as well. So it used to be that Jordan would go to Kennedy and then Kennedy would go to Brenner. Now we're cutting out that middleman and Jordan's going directly to Kennedy, uh, to Jordan's going directly to Brenner. So how are you doing, Henry? Welcome to welcome to the show. Uh, he says dash time dash. Blah, blah, can't even speak now. I hate traffic sometimes. Anyways, hashtag Dynamo UK. Henry, welcome and hope uh, you enjoy uh, today's stream. Um, Francisco says, comment from my mom. They're doing a sh... Oh, yeah. Um, we felt like the what, what uh, came out this these past couple of days, um, we needed to say it quicker than the show was... than when the show being on... on uh, on Tuesday, so I think Monday was a good opportunity to uh, kind of talk about it. You know, I mean, during the weekend I was at RGV, so we could we could we could have done it during the weekend, but I had plans. So, anyways, uh, going back to uh, to the topic, you know, I'm really looking forward, especially like like Sean said with the marketing. Um, I think there I think that he's going to kind of double down on traditional media. I feel like maybe like under Kennedy they try to really really focus on just social the social media aspect of it uh, and not really traditional media. I don't recall seeing you know ad, a lot of ads on TV, a lot of ads on on uh, radio, or a lot of obviously a lot of ads on, on websites. You know like Google Ads and stuff like that. Like. I'd occasionally see like, oh, we're the buy tickets to Houston Dynamo versus LAFC or buy tickets to the Open Cup final, you know, those kind of things. But I think it's, you can't go wrong with traditional media. Um, <laughs> Cisco says, no knock on the show. It's just funny. She knows the schedule. That's good. That's good. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate uh, her support as well, Cisco. Tell her we said that. Uh, Callow says, I'd take an advertising marketing job for the Dynamo if they can match my current benefits. I want to give that a try. We'd love to have people work in marketing, work in, in uh, the actual front office that love soccer, that love this team. I'm not saying that people that are currently there don't love this team or don't know about soccer, but it always helps when you pretty much, when you love what you do, you, it's almost like you don't work a day in your life. But I mean, that's a cliche, but you know, it, it kind of makes sense because you have, you have that motivation that whatever you do, like in your nine to five and your regular job, uh, working for the Dynamo is going to help improve the team that you love. And that gives you extra motivation to do things right with, uh, with the organization, making decisions and things like that. Uh, Blues fan says ads on the TV radio were so odd, like straight 90s kind of commercials. I'm agreeing with that. I heard some of those. How bad was it? Oh, it was 90 commercials. I mean, it was legit 90 commercials. I was a baby in the 90s. Uh... YouTube it. I mean, it was, it, was, it was bad. It was... Come on down to a great time at Dynamo uh, BBVA Compass Stadium. Oh, Bring you and your kids and 
get a four pack today and yeah it was pretty bad oh yeah it was yeah like i said advertising and promos were terrible all right i i even just even just listening to you say it like that, I'm like. And you think mm. I'm kidding? Like you think I'm it's exaggerating? Cr it's that's very cringe worthy. It, it is, and that's the that's the problem. Is it is Let's get some better people worthy. there, please. Thank uh, you. We will. We will. John is John is quality. I am. I've already said it. I'm excited. So that's 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 what we wanted to talk about. Uh, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that was 30 minutes of the now. Let's thing. go back to Memo's stream. Uh, what did he ask me? Hold on. Oh. Uh, check Discord real quick for yourself. <clears throat> uh, so, okay, so next thing. Oh, it's tie game per Cisco Rockets game, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, it must have been. Um, <laughs> Cisco says there was a time Dynamo tried tweeting in Spanish, but that didn't last real long. Uh, that kind of says things. Uh, um, he nailed it, actually. Scary accurate. Uh... Who, who nailed what? Um, you I'm, with the commercials. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, <laughs> I listened to enough of them on, on the 610 and 97.5 that I was about ready to bust my eyeballs out with a spoon. Uh, and, and it's sad because it's like I could have in 30 minutes come up with a better promotion or a better ad just on my microphone. Like, seriously, it wouldn't have taken me that long. Um all right, so we're going to take a quick break, only because I want to chug some water and grab a quick snack. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some Dash stuff. Uh, and uh, we got some news for you. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be back. Be sure to share it with your friends. Uh, yeah, like the video, subscribe to the video. Or like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, share the channel. Uh, you know the drill. Yeah, you know it all. We'll be back.
to Generation Orange, special Monday night edition of Generation Orange. Uh, so before we went to break, we mentioned we were, uh, well, we talked about the promos and how cringeworthy they were, and I wanted to throw it out there that I had Edson pull it up during the break, and uh, it's as cringeworthy as I remembered it being, but he has now been introduced to the cringeworthiness uh, of our previous uh, uh, iterations of our marketing and promo departments uh, for the Houston Dynamo, which have been less than stellar to say the least so he's actually going to paste that link into youtube chat at some point today i don't know if you can figure it out for some reason it's not uh yeah that's because you're not an admin on your own page brother should figure out how to do that Hold on, uh, let me just switch and or accounts. just paste it into discord open it up on this computer and then paste it in there uh, but in the meantime let's uh discuss that second thing that we were going to talk about so Brenner mentioned in the middle of these um, discussions, because uh, it was asked, uh, you know, what uh, Mr. Walker's, um, how it was going to, ha how bringing in Mr. Walker was going to affect uh, the Dash. Uh, because there were some concerns. The Dash were Kennedy's kind of pet project. Uh, so how is that going to work with him gone? And uh, a head coach candidate this week, as a matter of fact. And... Um, that caught me by surprise. I, I had heard that uh, by uh, Eddie Robinson, uh, who, as we know, is well-connected in the Dash now. Uh, and he informed me that, uh, that they've been interviewing candidates for the last month, essentially, or very close to the last month. Um, and uh, it, you know, he said that they've interviewed something like 15 or so candidates at this point. Uh, and he says that he believes in his, uh, or he has been told the decision should likely be made. Uh, within the next week or two, basically, they told him the decision should be made by the beginning of December. Um, now, what he didn't tell me, and I suspect I can take out of his statements whether he realizes it or not, uh, is probably he was one of the interviewees, uh, which, yay, I'm good. I'm glad with that because, again, we look at last season. We look at the difference between uh, before he started there and after he started there as assistant coach, and I don't think anybody can deny the impact he had on that team. Now, granted, it helped that he came in around the same time as Sofia Huerta, but all the same, he came in at the same time as Sofia Huerta. So, it, you know, cause, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be causation to have effect, but uh, there's definitely causation and effect, I think, in, in this in this case. So, why uh, why I wanted to bring this up is number one. Uh, a lot of people were concerned that the Dash weren't really taking it seriously last year. They said, oh. You know, or I've heard from specific individuals who will not be named that the Dash didn't take it seriously in the offseason last year. You know, they drug their feet, uh, and by the time they made a decision on who they wanted to bring in, Laura Harvey was already taken. Uh, Vlatko had already gone to another team. You know, that sort of thing. Or Vlatko, Vatko, Vakovic. I don't remember how you pronounce his name, but uh, whatever it is, uh, or whomever it is, because uh, he was the Kansas City. Um, the uh, FC Kansas City uh, coach is the Washington Spirit coach. No, that's Persons. I don't know, he's one of the coaches over there. Uh, but regardless, uh, he had moved to another team. Um, and so, uh, regardless, you know, two of the best coaches in NWSL moved to other clubs. And so it was rumored and it was put out there that the Dash weren't doing their due diligence. They were dragging their feet. They weren't very well run. And while I think some of that is fair um, to some extent uh, to put on to inexperienced individuals in the front office, um, I think that may be a little bit unfair as well because, you know, and I've said this before, we don't see what everything that happens with that front office. We don't find out stuff until the front office is deep into certain conversations. Uh, when it comes to transfer stuff, I can tell you guys that they're working on transfers a season before they actually sign a player, if not before that. Um there's a lot of times they have a player targeted for two, three seasons before they finally sign them. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, sometimes they get lucky and they can sign a guy in the same window they talk to him. Nine times out of 10, that's not the case though. Um, it's also been reported, uh, side note to that sidebar to that, uh, that Jordan is spending the next two to three weeks uh, in uh, South America uh, and abroad uh, doing scouting trip. Kudos, Matt Jordan. That's fantastic. Um, and, uh, Ooh, that was nice. Uh, that was very nice. Very nice to look in the background and see uh, James Harden swishing a three. I like that. I like it when the swishes happen. It's pretty great. Uh, it's pretty great when we also have it live on the stream because that can't possibly be a copyright notice or anything that we'll see later. Uh, but it's just on in the background, so it's okay. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, from the Dash perspective, it's just good to know um, that they're on the ball. They are trying to do everything they can. To have interviewed that many candidates means they understood that who they had was probably not not really the right person. Um, it also tells me they've got a lot of options. Uh, it tells me there's people interested in coming here and, and doing this. And now what I'm intrigued to find out is how many of those are college coaches, how many of those are current and DSL coaches, how many of those are assistant coaches, um, you know, that sort of thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, all of them are head coach material specifically, but um, you know, if they've interviewed that many, there have to at least be a good number of, of head coach candidates in there. Um, so that, that, Makes me happy. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, Alex. Uh, I'm really glad to know that. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm intrigued to see who they end up. You know, who they end up uh, basically inking a deal with uh, to become the next Ash head coach. Uh, how that person proceeds. Uh, hopefully, that person understands that the Dash are already built very well um, and only need really one or two pieces at most to take it to the next level um, to become a consistent perennial winner. Um, and make the playoffs for the first time ever would be great. Yes, please. Um, so, yeah. So, there you go. That's that's the info we have right now. Um, we just wanted to share it. Uh, it came up today, and, and uh, we wanted to discuss it a little bit. We wanted to throw it out there. Um, I don't know if you have any opinions on the matter, uh, Edson. Um. Take, my, take my drink so that I can think about what I want to say in response to that. That's what that drink was. I recognized that motion of, oh, hold on. Uh. Well, I'm happy that they are, or the, yeah, that, that the Dash is already interviewing mm -hmm. the potential head coach from uh, days before. It's kind of concerning to me that Brenner said one thing and the, uh, press conference with uh mr walker and reality is something else either they don't they didn't want to make it obvious like publicly like what was going on behind you know behind the scenes or brenner did not have want the information all of the information in regards to that to the didn't dash have it yeah so I, I think it's important and i think that really 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 is important because it's one of the things that I have seen um, and one of the things I have criticized this organization about for a while, uh, which is to say that uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to understand how consistently the left hand of the organization has not known what the right hand of the organization was doing. Um, and, and perhaps there is a bit of an air of Brenner just not wanting to release the information until the club was ready to do so. He maybe didn't want to. He didn't want to be the one to release inf you know, specific information unless the club was wanted to. Um, you know, that kind of has seemed to be his style uh, and how he's approached things. Um, stop it. But at the same time, um, on the flip side of that, I do have concerns because it's not the first time this has happened. And it's not always happened with just Brenner. It's been with other people. It's been in other ways. So I have to think that that was a culture issue. Uh, my hope is that is something that does get addressed over time. That's something that hopefully Mr. Walker can help kind of deal with. And, and I think we, ho I, I hopefully, hopefully, okay, I want to believe that we're going to see that he addresses some of these transparency issues as well. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some things they can't release because that's just how MLS does business. But hopefully when it comes to certain things like, hey, we signed a player, he's been injured for three months, now we're going to tell you. Maybe instead of waiting three months, you just tell us, hey, the guy's injured, we're waiting to find out what the injury is. Um, you know, maybe some more of that in terms of communications and media would be good. Um, you know, just opening it up a little bit more, understanding that the fans are, you know, in this day and age, fans are more experienced and more educated. Um, and they prefer to have that information in front of them instead of having to find it out from a secondary source. Um, it or if you're not going to do it that way, then uh, Mr. Walker, I want to let you know. Uh, Generation Orange is open to you every week, 7 to 9 p.m. You can feel free to call in or come on the show, and we'll be happy to discuss whatever you want to discuss uh, to get your information out there to make sure that you circumvent any of those opportunities that people misconstrue your information that you have. And or you can always DM us on Twitter. We're at Gen Orange Radio. Uh, we're always available for you to DM us, just so you know. Always in the DMs. It goes down in the DMs. 
don't know if people know that. It goes down in the DMs. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that's what I've got. Uh, guys, do you have any questions while Edson uh, starts discussing what he's got uh, on his mind? I, I think one of the biggest... Concerns. That wasn't intended to be a point towards you. I was rubbing my yeah. mustache. I think one, one really of the well. biggest con concerns that I have, and I know it's a big issue with the Dynamo still, but it's even worse with the Dash. And that is the way the players are pretty much not marketed. Very little. And if they do, it's alongside the Dynamo. What, what do you mean by not? You mean the Dash not? Um... Let's say... It's rare to see a Dash player like having interviews at a radio station or uh, besides, I think besides Glenn Davis' show. Yeah, keep going. He's just being a weirdo. Other, because other than that, like, like, I, like I feel like they don't put, they don't put the, the players out there mm -hmm. for the fans to, to, to see them, listen to them. Um, get I, uh, okay. So, I, and not to cut you off, I, I do think that he's going to address that uh, because, again, he's looking at it from a holistic approach. Um, he's looking at it from the experience and all that. The only the only reason I mentioned it because I mean that's one of the the issues that, that that I have that came out of the top of my head right now, and that hopefully. Uh, Mr. Walker can fix. Yeah, and, and well, I mean, he did. I mean, you look at how he approached it in, in Memphis, and that was a consistent thing. The players were constantly in the community, and it wasn't just these appearance type things where, oh, come see this guy at Academy today, you know, or whatever. It was more like, you know, hey, we're going to go do this event, and we want as many people to come out and, and talk to this guy, or, you know, hey, after a match, these guys are going to hang around for another 30 minutes to talk to you guys. You know, whatever it is, he always found a way to make it work. Again, small market, he had to be engaged and committed to the community. He had to have his players engaged with the community. They had to know who their players were, and they had to be committed to their players. They had to, you know, support their players. And and so it was a it was a family type thing. It really was. Like he was all about the, you know, we're a community. We are a community, not this is a community, but we are a community, you know, and he was part of that as much as anything else. Uh, that's not un incorrect at all, Callow, just so you know. Um, he wants to be close to her anywhere, not just in a public place. I'm sure he would love it in a private place too. Epa, epa. Oh boy, you were blushing. <laughs> uh, I, you guys can even see it on the stream, which is crazy. Uh, I didn't even think that would be possible uh, to see that on the stream. So that's pretty funny. Um, you guys got him all sorts of flustered now. He's not gonna be able to finish this show. Uh, so seriously, guys, do you guys have any questions or anything you guys want us to talk about right now? We got about ten minutes left on the show. Uh, we're happy to go a little bit over if you guys have some good questions. Uh, we'll give you about five minutes. Uh, to pop those in, we're going to take a quick break so we can let the dog out one more time because he really seems like he needs to go out. And so Edson can collect his thoughts and collect his manhood, which is now on the floor. <laughs> uh, and so we'll be right back. Take take care. We're not leaving yet, Edson. Don't try. <laughs> it's not going to cut it.
back uh so we're gonna talk real quick about what cisco said uh cisco says what surprised me was how they didn't tap more into the fact that elise was the black panther not sure of how much of that was actually copyright uh but he might have been the easiest player to market last season i completely agree with that i mean he had the personality he had uh, just the 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 personality he had the kind of passion um and he had the celebrations and i mean so he became a you know he was a name at that point everybody knew who he was with the dynamo and and uh it, you know going into last season let alone coming out of the season before that but going into last season and like cisco said they didn't really market it at all um and to me that's just a lost opportunity i mean yeah okay if it's a copyright issue whatever but nine times out of ten i've seen nfl teams do it i've seen nba teams do it where you know i mean Dwight Howard was marketed forever as Superman. Come on. I mean, just reach out to Marvel and, you know, Disney and see if they don't mind you using their their promotion as a way to, you know, maybe you can even come up with a partnership with them. I mean, you know, hey, take Black Panther takes kids to Disneyland for a weekend or something. I mean, you know, it, it's just I think it's stupid that they didn't try to tap into that. And to be fair, I don't I think that it had nothing to do with that they the copyright. I think they just didn't want to do anything about it. That's kind of how they operated. And it, it is concerning, and it is it is surprising, and it's frustrating. And I'm hopeful um, that this new um, this new individual in John Walker, uh, president of business operations, uh, is going to make changes where he needs to make changes and make the right changes to take this part of the company or part of the organization to the next level. Um, and you know, looking ahead, I think this season is going to be a decent season. I think next season after this is going to be a fantastic season from a marketing, from a you know uh, sales standpoint, from a how full is the stadium standpoint. Uh, so Alex says, also, I plan to go to Edinburgh to visit the UT RGV College. And does anyone know where he can get an RGV FC jersey? I'm going to pass that to you, my friend, because I'm sure you have the answer to that question. Yes, I do. All right, so basically you can get your RGVFC jersey uh, at the stadium. Uh, that's where the team store is. Uh, so basically coming, I'm assuming, Alex, you're coming in from the north. Uh, okay. So That's pretty funny. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Gabe, don't ever pull something like that again. But, but to be fair, that's a fair answer, though. Let's be real. <laughs> All right. So, so basically, when you're coming in from the north, uh, if you want to go to UTRGV, you get off on uh, University Drive. To go to the stadium, you don't get off on University. You exit uh, uh, an exit later, which is Freddie Gonzalez Drive. And then you're gonna turn. Uh, you're gonna turn to the left, and the the Freddie Gonzalez is gonna take take you straight to the stadium. So, Alex, are you uh, are you looking to go to UTRGV for college? Is that what I'm gathering from your your statement uh, about a visit to there? Uh, while he's waiting to respond to there, while we're waiting for him to respond to that, Calo, no, they don't. Uh, Trust Cisco me. says, you know, they're like, you know, and add add more to the fuel of the fire here. He says there's never there was never a Black Panther mask night or. 
you know, any promotions tied to the Black Panther. And, and it was such a perfect opportunity because the movie had just really come out. He was uh, – the Black Panther was in the Avengers movie, uh, the, most re- the Infinity War. I mean it, it was, there were so many opportunities to tap into that passion from those fans and to to bring in ki- – like he said, bring in kids and stuff. I mean – I thought were, he did. I thought they actually did something like that. They, they did. But it wasn't a – no, it wasn't a promo. It, it was nothing like that. It was – they just didn't. They didn't. I promise you they didn't. There wasn't. Cisco, Cisco was at every freaking match. They didn't do it. Okay, anything. not at the match, but I know there was one where where Albert took a couple of kids to go watch the, the movie. Yeah, they took a, he took kids to go watch the movie, but I'm sure that was as much him paying for the damn kids to go to the movie well, as it was true. the organization doing anything eh, about it. Yeah, you might have That's my problem is that the organization up until this point has not had the initiative to come up with ideas. It has always been initiative from players or from fans figuring things out instead of the organization. And so he says he wants to go there. 100%. Alex, uh, be sure to uh, contact me on Twitter if you have any any questions or something like that. I went there for four years. I, like you said, if you have any questions regarding UTRGV that you probably don't get answered when you do the tour, let me know. Um. Yeah, Cisco said nothing. I mean, other than that one movie night thing, and, and again, that was so. And they didn't really promote it. And he said, "Yeah, Cisco says he rented out the entire theater on his own. He paid for it out of his pocket. The organization put nothing into that. So again, it's it's unless somebody else is doing it for them, the organization doesn't have the commitment to to further anything. Um, you know, just like the Santa Fe ISD stuff, the stuff that happened with Santa Fe ISD that was they were supporting these causes and stuff." If the kid, if the the students from Santa Fe had not started their own thing, w- there would have been nothing about it within the Dynamo organization. It would have just been a null point, mm-hmm. um, you know. And, and so there's things like that, and and you know, and and you look, and I mean, Fertita gave away tickets to a playoff game to 300 students, and the Dynamo did nothing of the sort. They, I mean, nothing of the sort. And I know this because I was there. Um, and so, you know, it's just – it's these types of things. There are opportunities within the community to connect, to engage, to make headway with a group or groups of individuals that are not necessarily consistent or current Dynamo fans. Um, and, and if you can do that, it it creates a better atmosphere. You're getting these new fans that are coming in and they're enjoying the product on the field. And let's be honest, the last two seasons, the product on the field has been good. Look, yes, we were losing games this season and lost a lot of matches this season and more matches at home than we normally do. But even in those matches, they were still entertaining matches. It wasn't like we were going out there and not scoring goals. We were still scoring goals. We were giving up a lot of goals, but we were still scoring goals. So the entertainment factor was still there. And so to not take any time to promote any of that and not do it in a way that makes sense. And we're fans without marketing degrees. We're fans without a marketing background, without an advertising background. We're fans. We're, we're not being paid to do this. And yet in our spare time, we're able to come up with these ideas in five minutes. I mean, if we can do that as nobodies who know nothing about marketing, who have not taken any classes on marketing, then, I mean, really, to, to be fair, then – there's a major issue in the organization, and I think that major issue, honestly, was Chris Kennedy, and I think it just came from a culture. And that's one of the things that, um, uh, you know, that's one of the things that uh, Mr. Walker talked about as well. He said, "I want to bring in a culture. I want to change the culture here." He goes, "You know, and it's about creating a culture that is committed to the fan and committed to the experience." Um, well, Callow says he's got a marketing background. You're right, Callow, but you aren't offering a whole lot, so you know, I'm just saying. Uh, Cisco says, bottom line, I, I'm tired of the Dynamo still being disrespected by fans and not acknowledging as a major team, um, whether in the city or nationally. And I think that's completely fair. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're ever going to be the, the, uh, background phone, please. Um, oh, he wants to, is he telling his phone because he put a space in there or is yeah, he saying he wants so. to call in? I'm trying to figure out which. Uh, Because I did kind of call him out. Um, But no, I mean, you know, it's – I jump for cash. (laughs) We all do, brother. We all do. Uh, But, I mean, I think it's a fair point by Cisco that, you know, there's a lot of fans that view this club as a minor league club, if you will, you know, in terms of just the major sports in the city. They view it as the fourth best sport in the city. Um, Fourth? Wait. Yeah, fourth best sport in the city. And really considering, you know, and granted, I understand Texas as a sports market in terms of soccer is not a ripe bed to, to reap. 
But I do think that if for you, American soccer, it might say for American soccer. But I do think if you sow the seeds, if you if you properly engage the communities, you know, and if you go about it the right way, it, it's going to change the atmosphere. It's going to change like Cisco's talking about. There's people in the city that still don't know who the hell the Dynamo are. There's people that still call them the Dynamos. Um, you know, there's people that still call Maro Monotas. Um, <laughs> Dwayne, what's up? I don't know if you're in chat, but yeah, I just called you out, bro. Uh, I mean, you know, and, and so Mario Manitas or what was it? No, he said, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. For, like this, this one was like from one of our local news stations oh, I, I, call, I called that. Mario Manitas. Yeah. I remember like, you saying what? That. Uh, you know, so it, it's that type of thing. And, and I think that having a guy who has experience in addressing those things, and when he started at Memphis, Memphis was still a, not known in that city whatsoever. You know, the Grizzlies. I mean, they just weren't. Um, who? My favorite team is the Sabercats. Um, yeah, shut up, Cal. Uh, <laughs> Mario. It's a me, Mario. Um, but all right. So anyways, we've, we've, we've beat this dead horse into the ground substantially. Um, Speaking of horses. Hmm? Never mind. Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, all right. On that note, we're gonna we're gonna call it a night. Uh, we will be back tomorrow for about a one hour show as well. I have no idea, honestly, what we're gonna talk about tomorrow. I have no guests lined up. I, I let's maybe, just do it while we're playing Rocket League. We're gonna play Rocket League tomorrow, and you guys can throw questions at us while we're playing Rocket League, uh, and we will answer them live while we play Rocket League. That's exactly what's gonna happen tomorrow. And we're I don't think we're kidding. No, I'm being totally serious. That's mm -hmm. exactly what's happening tomorrow. Uh, unless you guys want us to play a different game and then you can throw it out there and we'll probably veto it anyways, but it, you can, you can at least <laughs> offer it as a suggestion. Um, the other option is we can one V one some uh, FIFA again and, uh, stream that on the, on, on the stream. Which as well. would be better. Cause now I can actually bring in my Xbox and put it here and I don't have to move everything over there. That's true. That's true. And you can have this, my screen behind me, behind you, <laughs> that you just won't be able to see me. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Gabe, that's the thing, Gabe. I mean, culture is such a big deal and I think it gets overlooked. Uh, I think leaders that don't understand what they're doing focus on everything but culture. Your leaders who who are successful, their focus is always on the culture. You have to change the culture if you're going to change the organization. All right, cool. Cisco's going to be here tomorrow. How are you going to be here tomorrow, dude? You got to work. Not just tomorrow. You got to work on Wednesday, whatever that day is after Tuesday. Wednesday, right? That is Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> just making sure, making sure the week hasn't changed on me. Uh, no, Cisco. I mean, you can. The door is always open. I just don't want you blaming me for you being exhausted on Wednesday, um, because I know you work at like four o'clock in the morning or have to get up that early. Uh, Rocket League without Calo. I'm sorry, Calo. That's, that's why we're talking about. That's why we're talking about doing FIFA instead of Rocket League. Rocket just for you, League Calo free edition. He gets off at four. I mean, well, we're not going to start till seven. So, I mean, you're going to have time to get here, but. I guess if you take a nap before we start, but you're going to be exhausted when you leave because you know you're going to stick around until about 12 o'clock because you're going to be like, all right, one more match, one more match, one more match. And it'll be 12 o'clock and you'll be like, all right, I'm seriously, I'm done. I got to go home now. <laughs> like so last I gotta be, time. I got to be up in four like hours. Like last time you guys went for like three hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, all right, guys, we're out. Uh, enough, enough chit chat and enough shooting the shit. It's time to go. So. Thanks, guys. Uh, again, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Discord chat. Uh, and, guys, uh, hashtag Forever Orange, hashtag We Are Orange, hashtag Somos Toros, hashtag Dash TF on, and hashtag We Are Gen Orange. I already said that, but okay. No, you just you said once again, We Are Orange. Did I? Yes, you did. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> I'm going to get it right one of these weeks. <laughs> there it is, everybody. All right, guys. Uh, Cisco says, yeah, he's probably not coming over. He just said that right there. He goes, "Yeah, you're right." <laughs> <laughs> I had to get I had to get Edson with the Afghan league. No, you I didn't remember play, that. No, he did not I play me that. with the I Afghan really, league. We he were, played you with the Afghan league. Who, no, he played you. You, no. got, you came in and he played. Uh, Cisco, vouch for me. You played. You played Afghan league with no, him. No, I played did not. One match with him in the Afghan no, league. And you're I like, I'm not. done with this league. This no. league is crap. No, no, that was all that, you. That league was fantastic. I, I don't care what you say. That league. I was think perfect. the best games. The best games that you two played was the when you guys played the Afghan league. That's because it was actually fair because the players were hey, so was, bad. No, you know what was funny? So in one of the matches, both of them chose the the. the, the there same was a team. bug. No, no. So 
So you guys chose the same team, oh, no, but there yeah. was the bu- the the bug where when you look at when you chose your your uniforms, it looked like one had the white, one had the black. But it turns out that they both chose the away kit, so they were both playing with the black kit, and it was confusing but funny as hell. Yeah, C- Cisco, he he just conveniently forgets that you actually beat him in the. Uh... Uh, beat him in the Afghan league. He said it's on the stream. It wasn't with the Afghan league. He, he did beat me, but it wasn't with the Afghan league. I, I, I'm sorry, Edson. Look, I've you known, know what it was? It I've was it was it was hey, the hey, Swedish. Hey, it was hey, either the Swedish hey, or hey, 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 listen, listen, listen. I'm no. gonna say this once for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know because I'm about to lay the smackdown on your ass. <laughs> I will always err on the side of Cisco over anybody else that I've ever known. And I've a, known people that have been very good. Get a room. Cisco's memory is second to none. This guy should be on Jeopardy when it comes to, like, his life in terms of, like, dynamo matches that he's been to and, and just crazy things that nobody should remember he remembers. Uh, I say that because I want you to remember that I said this. Because that way, when we do go back and watch that stream later and it, it turns out you did lose with the Afghan League, I can say, see? <laughs> it wasn't the, was I'm right. telling you, it wasn't the Afghan League. It was another random league, though. Mm-hmm, All right, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, Cisco. See, Cisco knows what's up. He knows when I say that. He knows where that's coming from. Uh, Gabe, oh, um, you're about to get banned from the chat, bro. Um, <laughs> couldn't remember playing Saprisa. <laughs> he retracted it. Thank you, Gabe. I do appreciate that. That is a public chat. Uh, I'm glad that doesn't show. That showed up on the video for all like 30 seconds. It shows seconds, up for, for like five seconds, and as soon as he retracted it, it disappears. It disappears. But yeah, it's going to be on that stream permanently. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. You are the man, Gabe. You are the man. <laughs> Uh, but no, seriously, it is time for us to go. Uh, I need to eat food, actually. I have not eaten dinner yet, uh, unlike some other people who ate dinner before we streamed. Well, it um, sounds like a personal problem to me. No, I'm kidding. I got food, at least. At least no. I don't have to leave the house to go or apartment to go get food. Uh, anyways, yeah, we will be back tomorrow. We'll be streaming some FIFA, probably. That seems probably likely. Uh, we'll probably set it up tonight before he leaves, actually. I don't know. Maybe. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, before you go to bed. Uh, but anyways, thanks for hanging out. We appreciate it, guys. Again, have a good week and uh, or good night, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Peace.